Hey guys, Andy here, starting a new video um, with some more information about Brazil and its culture. We have the World Cup going on right now and we're obviously hoping for the best because last time was a disaster. But anyway, let's get started. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about the Brazilian folklore, which is something quite strong in the country and you can find it in stories, you can find it in TV series and shows, um, books. And it's something that is, you know, common to us. And it's something that we know of since we're very little. As we know, folklore is traditional customs, beliefs, and stories of a community that is passed on through generations. Brazilian folklore is very diverse. It has attributes from um, Portuguese, African, and indigenous culture. Despite this richness, it only began to actually spread out um, from the 19th century onward. So we're gonna start off by the first folklore, which is Yara. Yara is also known as the legend of the mother of water, and this legend started in the Amazonian region of the country, and her name means the one who lives on the water. Hence, she is a mermaid with long black hair and dark brown eyes. The mermaid emits a melody that attracts men, and so they are hypnotized and surrendered by her sweet voice. Legend has it that she was very beautiful and she was very strong and her brothers felt very jealous of her beauty and her power and decided to kill her. However, um, she was able to reverse the situation because she had warrior gifts so she could go and kill them instead. And she's still there, you know, with this power of attracting men in the water and getting them hypnotized to do whatever she likes. Now we'll move on to the second one, which is a little guy who is more busy doing his stuff. Um, this is the Kurupira. He's a protector of the flora and the fauna, and he basically kills anyone who tries to attack it. Legend says that he lives in the forest during his mischiefs, hence he's also known as the forest demon who whistles and uses false signal to, you know, distract the guys out there in the forest as well. And he's described to be like, an agile uh, dwarf with red hair who has his feet turned backwards. Now that's the plot twist over here. So when he's walking, he's able to distract the guys with his mischiefs and everything, plus his um, foot turned backwards. So when you're looking, you think he's going to one direction, but he's going to the opposite way. And this brings together a few mysteries out there, including the forgetting of the paths, and the disappearance of some hunters. This folkloric character, he is described to like to drink and smoke a lot, and he just likes to chill out, you know, by himself in the forest, and, you know, he's just doing his thing there, he doesn't want to be, you know, disturbed, he doesn't want uh, anyone coming over to destroy the, the, you know, the environment where he he's in, so let's give him some credit. Or we should not actually, because legend says that he's... Uh, okay, so his weakness is his curiosity. And legend says that if you if you don't want to be, you know, falling in a trap, you have to make a ball of vine and hide the end well. And until the present day, a lot of lumberjacks, they go in the forest and offer bingo, which is like this, this alcoholic liquor and tobacco to distract him basically, so they can go into the forest. Some Spanish priest in the 16th century said that this character, he is a demon of the forest that affects the indigenous. So basically he's just there like disturbing everyone. And also this character was associated with many cases of violence, child abduction and psychological terror. So he's also able to bewitch children and capture them and after seven years he returns to the, like you know the kid to the parents anyway his name means boy's body hence he's a small guy there is also a day in brazil that we celebrate his day i don't know why but it's july 17. i guess it's just you know something that is so like legendary and mysterious and we're like yeah we're gonna have a day to remember him and remember this guy also, some regions of the country describe him to be having like pointy ears, like elves. And the most important thing, he has his foot turned backwards 
and he's a protector of the forest so don't mess with him third one we're moving to the headless mule mula sem cabeça this is insane check this out the headless mule is a woman that was cursed after having an affair with a priest okay the priest is fine the woman is headless and she goes galloping around and you know have a burning torch instead of her head so you know consequences right then she has steel or silver horse shoes and night so loudly that it can be heard from like everywhere you can actually hear her sobbing like a human which doesn't make sense at all so like you're a headless mule you have a torch for a head you're crying you're sobbing like a human now there are different versions to the story of like how it actually started how she actually got headless and everything so first one says that you know it's because she's having an affair with a priest so she has this consequence now and another one another like origin of this myth is that it, it was actually produced by traditional families to basically scare the girls from sleeping with their boyfriends before marriage so this would happen to them if they've actually done it before marriage she could be bewitched and turn into a headless mule it was a way to keep them within the moral standards of the time now according to the narrative the enchantment enchantment would actually take place on a thursday night this is when the woman was transformed the enchantment disappeared on the third crowing of the rooster so then the woman would turn back to her normal self she would be wounded she would be very hurt because she would be going wild in the forest you know spilling fire and you know kicking whatever came in front of her or the priest that she had an affair with could you know return the curse and make her human again and that's a lovely story in children's books yeah so you grow up learning stuff like this you better not get involved with a priest or sleep with your boyfriend before marriage otherwise things are not gonna be pretty moving on to the next one we have the werewolf which is you know a legend that's very popular everywhere in the world and probably started back in Europe in like 16th century, I'll guess. And I mean, that's what I read, so you know, I'm not really guessing, I'm just accepting the fact. And it's a myth that it's like very present in Brazilian and Latin American culture in general, um, depending from one region to the other, maybe the story varies a little bit. And this is the first thing you need to know about him here in the country. In some places, it is believed that werewolves transform when they are in a crossroads on Friday nights. A dawn returns to, you know, to their human form. Now, this gives me a lot of Twilight vibes because those werewolves were really cool, right? They were amazing and they could transform like whenever they were mad and like yeah i'm gonna be a werewolf now there is another one which is something quite new i didn't know about this but legend says that in a family of seven children when like the first six are all women the seventh child if he's born a man he will transform into a werewolf when he hits puberty which is like insane so this would happen from his 13th birthday onwards and like until the end of his life that on the night of the full moon he would transform into a werewolf and then at dawn return back to his human form it's not that bad right no there is another um side to this story that says that werewolves like to get unbaptized babies to transform them into werewolves so this would be a way to make families baptize their children otherwise he will become a werewolf according to the legend as well to fight a werewolf the individual must be using bullets and objects made of silver or fire moving on to the next one we have the boy tata this one is quite similar in concept to the kurupira however it's shape it's not it's not like a little boy it's a serpent on fire it protects animals and forests from people who try to harm it and especially from people who try to burn it. In the folkloric narrative, this serpent can turn into a log on fire to be able to deceive and burn people who invade and burn the forest. 
And it's also said that the person that looks in the eye of the boy tata becomes crazy and blind. Despite coming from an indigenous language, this myth is found in the 16th century. You know where? In the priest's textbook. This is what he says. There are also other ghosts, mostly on the beaches, who live most of the time by the sea and rivers and are called by tata, which means fire things, which is the same as if you said the witch is on fire. You can see nothing but a sparkling torch running towards it. Equity attacks the Indians and kills them, like the Kurupitas. What is this? We still don't know for sure. Now, some regions of the north believe that this boy tata, he represents evil spirits that walks around burning things. Whereas in the south of the country, some believe that this is actually related to the flood, you know, from, from the Bible, from Noah's Ark, where all the animals were let in except for the snake who was left behind. The ones that survived were punished by fire. Next up, we have the bottle. Now, this is very similar to a regular dolphin. However, he is pink and he lives in the Amazon waters. Um, he's also very intelligent. And what happens is, on the night of full moon, of course, everyone is very busy during the full moon. He's also going to be busy doing his thing. He transforms into an elegant and beautiful young man to attract the ladies. Morally, he appears in the festivities of June, which is like winter time, um, and we have the celebration of the saints. This is actually real, we actually do this. It's called Festa Junina, and we celebrate the saints, and we have amazing typical food. Um, but back to the myth, he goes to these festivities dressed in all white with a very large hat so he can cover his nostrils of dolphin because that's not really like fully transformed and this is a hot drop guy he chooses the most beautiful young ladies who are single and takes them to the bottom of the river and what does he do there he impregnates them and then abandons them the next morning he turns into a boto again and for this reason the legend of the boto is also used to justify pregnancy out of you know, out of weddings. So it's actually customary to say that a woman who is pregnant with no husband, the kid is the son of a boto. Now we move on to the last one, which is probably the most emblematic myth, you know, folklore of the country. And I'm talking about Sassi Perere, or simply Sassi. This is a boy who has one leg, and he goes around playing tricks, he has a trolling behavior and he carries around a red cap that grants him magical powers and so he plays around with some animals and some people. Now this is what he does. He braids animals' tails at night, he hides objects, he whistles loudly to get, you know, travelers frightened, changes the salt container for the sugar container and distracts the cooks so like they burn the food. So you don't really expect him to be what he is. He is the guardian of the herbs and medicinal plants and he can really mix it up to get you confused. If you get the wrong plant in the forest, you know, you can get a little tipsy because of him. Legend says that to capture a sassy, you have to throw a sieve in the wind so you're able to capture him and then you have to take out his red cap and place him in a bottle so he can stop his mischievousness. It is believed that Asasi was born in a bamboo shoot and he lives there until the age of seven. And when he's finally out, he lives until the age of 77 doing all his pranks and having a lot of fun. And when he dies, he turns into a poisonous mushroom. Okay, so the legend of Sassi Perere started like in colonial times, um, especially around like the southern region of the country and he is very present in our folklore like it's something that everyone has heard of um there was tv shows like for kids that had him as a character um so you know it's very very present initially though um sassy was portrayed as a black boy with two legs and a tail however with some african influence in the folklore it lost the leg and started to smoke the pipe and he lost his leg fighting capoeira there are some rumors as well that um, the red cap actually came from northern Portugal stories of a troll 
and then it was acquired by Sassi. So obviously from region to region, you're gonna find a little bit of differences in the stories overall. Now, I really hope that you got to know a little bit more of the folklore and I haven't made it like really confusing or anything, but they're really common. Um, and also if you want to get to know more about these ones or even other ones, there is actually a TV show on Netflix, like a Brazilian one, but you know, you can, you can watch it in English if you want. Uh, that puts all these myths, all these legends, all this folklore in reality. So it's pretty good. Um, it's with like real people, it's not animated or anything. And it's called Invisible City. I really recommend it. It's really good. It's really involving and engaging and you just want to watch it from start to finish on the same day. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I invite you to subscribe, leave a comment and like, and follow me on Instagram where I show everything in real time. And also follow my agency if you're planning to come to Brazil or if you know anyone coming to Brazil or anywhere else in the world, really. Um, get in contact with me. We can plan your trip and it will be all good. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.